righty, folks. So welcome to episode 10. Tim, we made it into double digits. They said we wouldn't last, Tony. They said we wouldn't last. <laughs> That's it. We're just like a, you know, a little mosquito just keeps buzzing around. Can't get rid of us. That's cool though. Episode 10, it's been 10 weeks. And, um, again, thank you everybody. It's been some good feedback, some good views, and it seems like everybody's enjoying the show. Enjoying the trivia segments of the show, <laughs> no matter who wins. <laughs> they, yeah. So win or so lose, right? Good. But uh, I think we've all learned. You know, hey, give her your best shot, right? We've learned that from. Uh, oh, definitely, it's all fun, man. I from our care. heroes in the in the film industry, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, try? We, got like, we got another nice like from Sly on a couple of the comments from round fourteen on the post. So it's uh, nice that he's still keeping an eye on us, and we're still in his wheelhouse there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. How you been? How you, how's your summer going? So, so far, so good. It's still boiling hot down here in Florida. I don't know about up there with you, but you know. Yeah, we had a, I guess we had our, um, Canadian version of a heat wave. Uh, we were, it was in the forties. Um, that's, uh, even Fahrenheit. So it was, uh, it was pretty, you know, that's, that's a heat wave for us. So, um, <laughs> I don't know what that is like about 95 or something, but, uh, Probably 96, like but yeah, I, but, I'm not uh, sure quick with those conversions, but yeah, we're on, uh, we're on vacation. Hot. So my wife and I are on vacation this week and I wanted to show you something before we get into it. So a little while ago, we talked about the hoser aspect. I'm a Canadian and, uh, I am a hoser. So my wife found, we were in this little shop and my wife found this sign. So I'm going to put it up here. <laughs> Flannel wearing Canadian who does nothing but drink beer and watch hockey. So oh, that is awesome. Uh, I'm going to add that to my, uh, my backdrop. Uh, that <laughs> is the definition. Brilliant. That is the definition of a hoser. Eh? That is awesome. So See, that, I didn't even know it had an official definition. That's good. There you go. Right. So <laughs> we probably, I think we might have made that ourselves, but we slipped okay. it into the dictionary, but hey. That's okay. And then it went on to become very well known with the uh, the brothers from Second City Television, right back in yeah, the, uh, Bob and Bob and Doug McKenzie, Doug McKenzie, yep, yeah, strange so. brew. If, uh, when, no, at least that's when the Americans got to know of it, anyway. That's right. If uh, anybody hasn't seen that, that is a absolute cult classic. <laughs> uh, go back and watch Strange Brew. You won't. I'm be sure you probably think it's even better than we do, and we thought it was funny. So yeah, so. yeah, good stuff. But this week we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're talking Rambo first. Rambo 3, we're going to talk a little Rocky 3, and then we'll lead right into our main segment here, which I'm sure you guys could probably get a guess on based on my shirt and Tim's shirt and Tim's yeah. completely changed background. I've moved uh, into the, uh, I've moved into the wrestling area of yeah. my, uh, studio. <laughs> yeah. and, so we'll, um, be, we'll be discussing that, but Rambo 3, yeah. uh, just a little rundown of it. We figured we'd talk about both threes, Rambo 3, Rocky 3. Yeah. And something, Rambo 3 something different. was, uh, that was, that was, about as action packed as you get. I mean, after this, I thought the second one was action packed. This one, right? You know, was was even more. Sure was. Pretty cool, you know. And obviously, the the main premise of it was Troutman got taken behind enemy lines, and Rambo had to do something about it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, come out in nineteen eighty eight, like you said, and an absolute blockbuster, right? Yeah. Uh, this was one of these movies, folks. I wasn't allowed to go see because uh, I wasn't old enough, but. Uh, <laughs> um, as part of the fun things to do in the movies, I snuck into it. I wasn't missing oh, yeah. Rambo on the big screen. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, I got to see it on the big screen for sure. Yeah, and I remember when it came out, I, like, I'm a few years older than you, so I did go see it in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something else, you know? I mean, obviously, the the, the stick fighting scene oh, that started yeah. right off when he's walking in, you look at his mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. he's just shredded. Yeah. You know, he's just ripped to shreds there, and he... Um, but it was good. It was a good film. Yeah. It was exciting. It had a lot of adventure to it. Had a good little storyline. You know, I remember when um nobody really wanted – well, remember when he first asked Troutman to – I mean, Troutman first asked Rambo to go. Yeah. When he, yeah. he didn't want to go. That's right. And we touched on that in a, a episode or so ago with um the relationship between Troutman and Rambo. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite scenes in Rambo 3 is the discussion that happens mm -hmm. after the, you know – American diplomat, if you will, mm -hmm. they come and unofficial. Of course, everything's unofficial with Rambo, yeah, right? Open books. And Rambo says, "Look, at, I put in my time. My war is over, right?" And he walks yeah. away. So Troutman follows him, and and they have that discussion about you know coming full circle. So that was a great scene. I I just love that part. Yeah, same here. Same here. And you knew uh, 
you knew when Troutman did decide to go, and you obviously <laughs> knew something was going to happen. I mean, he was <laughs> the movie yeah. wasn't going to go without Rambo, so no, that's right. <laughs> you kind of knew it was where that was going, and uh, mm-hmm. and then of course John Rambo hears about it, and bad things happen to bad people. So. Yeah, that's right. Well, there and the other the other scene that uh, I think of is this here where he he makes it to the camp, right? Mm-hmm. And they're kind of strategizing, and they say you have to wait, like we wait. And he, you mm-hmm. know, of course he says then I'll go alone. And, you know, they'll just say, well, you'll die. And he, of course, ramble fashion, then, you know, I'll die. Right. But, uh, well, yeah, you he's know, definitely willing to die. I mean, for Troutman, yeah, that was, that's right. That's a no brainer. I mean, he did, it wasn't mm-hmm. even a question in his mind. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then we get to see, I mean, we get to see Troutman and Rambo in action in this movie, right? So, yeah, I mean, different I than the rest of cool. I thought that was pretty cool with Troutman getting the gun out and, yeah. you know, to run around like a soldier again and, mm-hmm. you know, not just being the uh, commanding officer. So that was pretty That's cool. That's right. Yeah. That, that scene there for people listening on the network, um, we have up is just after, you know, Rambo comes in and frees, frees Troutman. And of course he's got the, the wound on the side and Troutman looks at him and he says, I, you know, how's the wound? And, you know, Rambo says, you taught me to ignore pain, right? He says, the work. And he goes, not really. Not really. Don't, don't take it personal. <laughs> but, uh, you know, either there all, there's always that little bit of, uh, comedic, uh, yeah, a little lines humor in there with Sly, in. right? Yeah. So Good again, stuff. another, another movie that Sly wrote, um, and just, yeah. just phenomenal, right? Like we've talked about this before, you know, actor, director, writer, you know, mm-hmm. artist, but I mean, it's bad. It's hard enough to act in a movie and pull it off, but to write it, Jesus, you know, the guy's pretty and good. Then, and then to sit there, you know, you're you're the actor. You're ready for mm-hmm. your scene. You're looking around, making sure everybody else is ready for yep. their scenes. Okay, action, and then you got to go. I mean, it's a it's a lot of moving parts right there. So kudos yeah. to him. That's Not right. that he obviously couldn't pull it off because he did, mm-hmm. but it was cool. I mean, I spent. And then the um to wrap it up, the ending of it, I I thought that was the coolest part of it was with the yeah when Rambo got in the tank. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, went up against the, uh, the, the Afghan or the Russians and not, not yeah. Afghan, Russian, um, uh, Colonel the there. Helicopter, was, right? Yeah. The big, uh, hell. And that, and that was one of the first times I think publicly people saw that type of it was either just a helicopter or a plane. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was kind of cool seeing that new, I guess, military, um, air, airplane helicopter combo thing. That was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, That's like I said, there was, Lots of action, and I'm sure that everybody has seen it. For anybody that hasn't seen it, uh, treat yourself and go back and watch the Rambo films. Um, you know, the younger generation is coming up now. Look at, uh, look at our friend Tony D with his kids, you know, <laughs> yep. yeah, uh, bringing up, bringing up the kids with the Rockies and, and hey, that's um, how it works. I mean, now, my girls watch them, we, and teens. yeah, exactly, right? So, you know, but that's uh, how it works. Unbelievable amount of action in Rambo three, right? So, um, just a great, uh, great flick. Not maybe the most, um, you know, as compared to Ram- uh, First Blood, excuse me. You know, obviously you're not going to get that, the drama. Uh, no, just I mean, turn it, your, you know, turn again, your brain off compared, and enjoy we your movie. compared Rocky three to, to Rocky that one time yeah. in Rocky four, and it's not a comparable film. No, that's right. You know, Rocky has more substance to the film, mm-hmm. more, more heart and soul, I guess you could say, without, Bad mouthing the other sequels. I mean, sure. it's, and that same thing with First Blood. It was mm-hmm. a, definitely a more soulful movie, a more meaningful mm-hmm. message movie as opposed to blow everybody up. Yeah. It, this is, know. uh, but again, this is the it's, it entertained you. It entertained yeah. me. That's yeah. all that and matters. You know what? And like I said, you're going to the movies to have a good time, to have fun. I mean, sure, some movies are, are way better than the others, but this, uh, I mean, this was a great movie. I, uh, I definitely approve of it. Oh, absolutely. And it, you know what's so funny about it is that when Rocky th- Rocky 3 came out in 82, and that was the first time you saw Sly shredded. He was just mm-hmm. refined. Mm-hmm. He was ripped. It was after Rocky 2. Yep. And it was the first time you saw him like that. And then, of mm-hmm. course, 85 was Rocky 4. You saw him even more defined. Mm-hmm. I didn't think he could get more defined. I'm like, come on, man. You got muscle tone in muscle tone. How can yeah. you get more? And then yeah. Rambo 3. It's just, it, oh my goodness. I mean, he looked yeah. like somebody sketched him out. And I believe I've, I've read that Sly said he was as, in the best shape of his life for Rambo three, you know, I wouldn't doubt and, it. Uh, I mean, he looked the part too. Yeah. He definitely looked the part. And, uh, if, uh, 
if he thinks he was, then I agree with him because yeah, um, exactly. I'm not going to argue know, with him. I mean, he no, was in great shape not. for Rocky three. I mean, he looked yeah. phenomenal in Rocky three. Yeah. I mean, especially, especially seeing him for the first time when you already saw Rocky two and you saw yeah. him, you know, like that, you're like, Oh my God, look at this. This is a completely yeah. different, different guy. I yeah. Mean, uh, That's right. Yep. He had, he won the belt and he just shredded up. I mean, it was, yeah. Great. And that, and that was, I mean, I got into, fitness and weightlifting and heavy bags and whatnot mm-hmm. for Rocky and Rocky two. Yeah. But when Rocky three came around, I was 16 mm-hmm. and that's when I just took it to a whole other level. I just, that's right. when I saw him like that, I was like, Oh man, I got, I got to do something about the way I look. That's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. So and uh, I mean, I loved watching and I'm sure you did as well. And everybody, the montage at the start of Rocky three, right. When yeah. he's fighting all the fighting, all the challengers yeah. and, and then you see Clubber Lang uh, come in and, and he's upset and he's like, and you know, he, so you see him fighting and, and back and forth and quite an opening, quite a different opening. Yeah. And you, and you see Rocky. Mickey in the, you see Mickey in the audience in quite a few mm-hmm. of those fights with, yeah. when they're flashing to Clubber. And right. Mickey was like, I, I don't want no part of this guy. This guy, he, right. he'll just, you know, he knew, he knew where Rocky was at that yeah. point. That's right. He knew, it, he knew he wasn't the hungry, no. eye of the tiger fighter that he was when he won no. the title. That's right. And the other thing in Rocky three is we've talked about this before. This is the introduction of the Rocky statue to the yeah. Rocky franchise, right? Yeah. And how big is the statue to not only the city of Philadelphia, but to, you know, the States and, and Rocky fans around the world, right? Uh, absolutely. It's definitely not only is it because it was in the film and mm-hmm. so you can go, touch a piece of film history, Rocky yeah. history, but it's uh what it represents and how it meant when it, it was in the film at the top of the steps, mm-hmm. the Rocky mm-hmm. steps to, to the museum. Mm-hmm. It stayed there for a little while too, from what right. I understand. And then they moved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they moved it to the front of the Philadelphia spectrum for a little bit too. Yeah. And then they almost were going to just take it down completely. They were like, they were fighting back and forth that it was a piece of movie memorabilia, not art. It shouldn't be by the art museum. Yeah, I had the yeah, truck loaded up, Tony. Paying. What's I that? You, I, I had the truck loaded up. I was heading to Philly. <laughs> I said, you don't want it. It'll look great in my backyard I'll by the pool. I'm happy to tell you that sucker's yeah. huge, too, man. It's but, a big but, statue. Uh, could you imagine <laughs> Could you imagine my wife if I brought home that? Right? I said, I got a nice statue for the yard. How crazy? Well, right? Sly has one in his house. How crazy well, that's is that? Right. I mean, he's got that's one right. of them. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's crazy. three or something, and he has one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the other one's at the steps where yeah. everybody can now enjoy. And now it's got to the point where it's been dedicated to Philly. Sly mm-hmm. went there, and you know later on in the mm-hmm. in, after Balboa, and he has the on the front of the plaque there. Now it has mm-hmm. the keep moving forward speech on there, right. and it's such a such a huge t- tourist attraction. Rocky well, how could they? That's it. How could they not? How, how could they not want it? And there's no way they're ever getting rid of it, right? The not amount of uh, the no. amount of uh, people that it attracts. Yeah. And I, I feel bad saying this. More people are there to see the statue than the museum, right? Well, inside the museum, I'm sure. I mean, I, I don't know the attendance. I don't want to insult yeah. the museum, but I mean, no. more people probably run those steps and never go through those doors. That's right. Yeah. In my opinion. And I'm just guessing, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Maybe the museum could say, Tony, you're yeah. really wrong. I, I think yeah. I like the little line in Rocky. So. Rocky five with his kid. And he says, you know, I've been running up these steps for 30 years. And I never knew there was valuable pictures inside. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of the building. And also too, from what I understand, going back to Tony D who I, I met in Philly mm-hmm. when we went up there to see Carl Weathers. Uh, from what I understand, that's the back of the museum is yeah. the steps. That's yeah. not the front of the museum. Oh, is that right? Eh? That's so, what, yeah. I, that's what he told me. Know. That's the back of the museum. Yeah. So that's pretty funny too. And everybody goes right there. They'd be, mm-hmm. I mean, you go, you Google it. It mm-hmm. says Rocky Steps. Right. Benjamin yeah, Franklin Parkway. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. Rocky Statue, Benjamin yeah. Franklin Parkway. That's so right. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, that, that's not going anywhere there now. No. That, that movie was so big at the time. I'm so glad they didn't get rid of it. You know, like yeah. you said, Mr. T was in, was introduced and that was his first film role. Mm-hmm. And then the other gentleman that was the first film role that we had in there was the ultimate male, Thunder Lips. The ultimate male. Uh, Okay. <laughs> he wasn't known then. So, you know, no. you really didn't know anything about him. I mean, you just yeah. saw this massive guy coming out. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, why they carry him? He's walking. Oh, Polly. Right. You know, like that's, got- that's another great line. Like, 
because he's what he's like two feet taller than everybody else coming through oh, the crowd, yeah. right? So they just assume that he's being carried. Well, Paul yeah, does, you know, right? it just says he's standing nearly seven feet tall. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and it's just he's just a massive sight. I mean, there's a big, big man. Well, the so picture I, we have up now for people listening, of course, is yeah. Thunder Lips and Rocky. Um, this is where Rocky's negotiating mm-hmm. what they may do in their so-called charity match yeah he's like right, hey so. first you i hit you then you hit me we'll go around a little bit you know and, and then you uh, hear mickey in the background right <laughs> stay away from him don't mess with him what are you doing <laughs> right? mickey knows he's gonna get killed oh, and then and the then, first time I mean, hope comes down on him yeah Rocky knew even was, before uh, even before he gets in the ring and mickey you know you get the what the hell goes inside your head anything normal right you ever fight a wrestler just- Nobody would do this much for charity. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Hope would. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Those of you youngins that don't know, look him up. Google Bob Hope. He did yeah. a lot for charity. That's right. But, <laughs> um, just, just, you know, you get that. It's a, with Rocky three, you know, there's so much going on. There's Clubber Lang. There's Thunder Lips, right? Um, mm. again, another shot here. Um, didn't start out well for Rocky in now, that charity I mean, match. But... Now is where Thunder Lips picks up Rocky over his head and throws him out of the ring. Would it go but five rows, I think? So oh, he he went deep into that play. And you know, yeah. I gotta I gotta give Sly credit because not only yeah. does Sly literally lift up Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and roll him over the ropes. Yeah. The man weighed three hundred pounds. Yeah. And you may be able to bench press three hundred pounds, but yeah. to pick up a person that's three hundred pounds. Yeah. That's right. And roll him over the ropes like that. I mean, he got him out of the ring. Yeah. And uh, I remember seeing an interview with Hulk Hogan one time where he said, he goes, That was no no there was no joke out there. He goes, Sly took everything I gave him. He goes, he's yeah. one tough son of a bitch. And yeah. uh, it's uh goes to show how he, he didn't want to uh, make believe it. You know, he wanted it to seem real. That's and, right. And uh, he was willing to take the beating to get it. And Hulk didn't hold back. <laughs> Hulk yeah. said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so well, he, the, uh, he went and got him. You know, the days before the CGI and the, and, mm-hmm. and the guys doing their own stunts. Right. And, and uh, Sly was famous for doing a lot of his own stunts. Oh right? yeah, early on. So, I mean, later, even later on, still, he'd uh, he'd do a lot of his stunts, right? So, yep. Oh yeah, he did. But he tell the doctors uh, finally he, he said got, enough. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure the insurance companies for the film production, uh, mm-hmm. film producers, and the studios were like, "Look, man, mm-hmm. <laughs> got to get this arrest." Yeah. But he uh, that came out in '82, and uh, mm-hmm. that officially put Hulk Hogan on the map. And that's right. You started paying a little more of attention to him. I mean, I didn't know who he was except when Rocky Three came out, mm-hmm. and then in 1984, which was two years later, it was Hulkamania. Oh That's my right. goodness! So there's it just um, took everything by storm. Pretty interesting background story with involving Rocky Three. So Hulk Hogan wasn't at, was in the WWF at the time, WWE mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So he was in the WWE, and it wasn't like it is now today. It wasn't as there was different territories, okay? So he was in WWE for a bit, and then he was also wrestling in Japan. Mm-hmm. He gets a telegram from Sylvester Stallone. I want you to be in Rocky Three. He thinks Sylvester Stallone just messaged me about a movie. He thinks right. it's a joke, right? Yeah, because Japan, Japan he goes, was huge. By 82, yeah. And he's big. thinking, there's no way he knows who I am, <laughs> and there's no way this is a this is a joke. You know, someone's playing a prank on me. Right. Off off he goes to Japan. They get back. They're in a panic, okay, because they're ready to start filming this thing, and they need him. So again, they reach out, and he, you know, the, his agent says, "You got to call Sly." He goes, "What do you mean? He's, he's been trying to call you." You know, no cell phones back then, no sure. internet, so sure, it's all the phone messages, and I'm there's you know message after message. So he finally gets a hold of him. He can't believe it. He's going to do the movie. Well, the WWE Vince McMahon Senior at the time says, listen, you are not going to film a movie. You are a wrestler. We've got you booked. And Hogan said, back in the day, wrestlers were wrestlers. They weren't TV stars. They weren't movie stars. We didn't have The Rock. You know, you're not going to be, we're not going to lend you out and do movies like they do now. So he said, look, I'm going to do this movie. They said, you do this movie, you're fired. He says, fine, fire me. I'm not going to miss a movie to be, a, a chance to be in a Rocky movie. Especially sure. with Stallone. He goes and does the movie, and the movie is a major, major success, oh, right? Huge, huge. So the McMahons, of course, business people they are, they look at this and they say, hmm, wait a second. 
ding, 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 the light bulb goes off and they think, geez, we got to run with this. Like this is yeah. our golden, t- golden ticket, right? They're yeah. in the business of entertainment. They call him back in. They re rebrand him, make him Hulk Hogan, right? They said, we're going to, we're going to, you know, you're going to win the belt. You're going to run with it. You're going to be the face of the, of the company. Hulkamania was born, like you said, mm-hmm. and off and running largely part to Rocky three. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, that's what put him on the map to me. So yeah. I'm sure there was a ton of Rocky fans out there that didn't knew, I mean, know nothing about wrestling. Right. And then it got you, you know, I, I paid attention to it a little bit. I mean, like I said, 84, I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was older. I was 18. Uh, but I remember you know, WrestleMania and I mean, Hulkamania, WrestleMania, mm-hmm. yep. uh, Roddy P- Piper and, you know, the, uh, all the bigger names. Yeah. Wrestlers that were for there for then anyway. So I put up the poster, and it's funny that you mentioned WrestleMania because Hulk Hogan's partner for WrestleMania was Mr. T from (laughs) Rocky Three. So Mr. T and Hulk Hogan faced Roddy Rowdy Piper and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff in a tag team match. This was unprecedented. This was they never thought that they'd pull this off. Um, WrestleMania was absolutely huge. Uh, it was the first one, right? So 1985 that they did this. We got some pictures here, people listening of Hulk Hogan and Mr. T in action, right? So, and Mr. T, I mean, he's still ripped, right? From, oh, from yeah. the Rocky movies and he's a, he's an athlete. So you can see that, uh, you can see he's handling himself pretty good there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he went, uh, I didn't, how long did he wrestle? He, Mr. so T. he, he wrestled in WrestleMania one. He WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania two, he fought Roddy Piper in a boxing match. And I remember was, that. Yeah. He was winning and Roddy Piper got disqualified and, and actually started to wrestle, which wasn't yeah. allowed in the match. Right. So yeah, of course, Roddy that. Piper is the heel. Roddy, Roddy Piper folks, for any of you don't know him, uh, was, was an unbelievable heel later turned baby face. They, the term in wrestling. But he said, uh, just when you think you have all the answers, I changed the questions. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, he played the um, bad guy pretty good. Yeah. So they, uh, they had a match in WrestleMania two. Um, he was in, I don't think he was in WrestleMania three. So that time he okay. had gone off and he started doing the 18s right. and, uh, and then the by then and, Hulk was just massive. I mean, yeah. you're talking 85, 86. I mean, Hulkamania started in 84. Yeah. I remember 86. To 89, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't really recall because, like I said, yeah. I wasn't extremely into it. Right. Where it was just massive. Yeah. I mean, T-shirts, well, he was, toys. That's right. It, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. Yeah. He he was absolutely huge. So I started actually watching wrestling before I watched Rocky because huh. he came out in, um, like you said, Hulkamania was born in 84, right? So the picture there, that's the statue out front of uh, Hulk's. Yeah. Gift shop in Clearwater he's, Beach. He, he's still huge, right? So, <laughs> um, but Hulkamania, like I said, I was 10 years old when Hulkamania came out and it was, these characters were larger than life and bigger sure. and better and, and, and they were all characters, right? Like they weren't, there was bad guys and good guys and, and, um, they don't, not like now or today where they all travel together and they, you know, they, it was a show, right? Like the bad right. guys didn't associate with the good guys. And, right. Um, but, um, like I said, I was 10 years old when, when Hulkamania came out and, um, you know, anybody that comes out, rips their shirt off and, and <laughs> has that much energy and body slamming people. It's, uh, it's quite a fun show. So plus he's, and then in, I mean, he's just right. a massive, massive guy. Well, that's right. And then, um, so he actually had a reign for over three years, close to four years where he was champion. And that just doesn't happen even in, mm. in wrestling, even in the scripted, uh, you know, right. uh, entertainment world. Right. Nobody is the champion for almost four years and he wrestled all over the world. Um, now the storyline that went into WrestleMania three was actually quite large. And I'm not kidding when I say large. Uh, Andre the Giant, who at the yes, time, I remember that too, right? Had not been defeated for 15 years. Okay. Yeah. So he challenged, uh, he turned heel and uh, that was a shock, right? That was, he came out on Piper's pit and he ripped the shirt and he ripped the crucifix and, you know, he challenged Hulk Hogan to the title 
And this was Hogan's best friend. Okay. So the storyline, and then you get Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. Okay. Yeah. Look at the picture though. You want to talk about a big guy. Mm-hmm. Hulk is six. Hulk, well, Hulk is billed as what? Yeah. Six, seven, three, six, ten. Six, eight. And Andre, six, eight. they had billed him at seven feet. He wasn't quite seven feet. Although mm-hmm. in his, his wrestling world, they put him at seven feet, but he was at 500 pounds there, people. Oh my goodness. Okay. And he had a size, I think he had a size 26 shoe. Okay. Yeah, well, look at Hulk's hand next to yeah. Andre's hand in that yeah. picture. So I wear, just to put in perspective, I'm short, 20 year old taller. I wear a size nine. Yeah, I okay. wear 11. I mean, I, so okay. I mean, 20, I mean, it's two of my shoes, three of my Yeah, so you can put both your feet in Andre's <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that's, that's so insane. They, and they broke, which held for a long time. They broke an attendance record for any event, 93,000 people wow. at the Pontiac Silver Dome. In Michigan, okay. Wow. So if you don't think people like wrestling, go back and watch WrestleMania. Oh, 3. you watch? Oh, yeah, I see them every now and then. They'll flash by some old, okay. you know, uh, whatever years they're doing the yep. WrestleMania, and the place is insane. Yeah. they've started doing in the last few years. Uh, they've started going in football stadiums. They had just one in Tampa Bay a few years ago. Okay, yeah, they, I remember they that. play in the football stadium. So they're, yeah, they're putting seventy. You know, between fifty and th- fifty and seventy thousand. They had one in Dallas last year. Uh, there was over a hundred thousand people. Okay, a wow. hundred thousand people, and you're watching those guys with a, what a telescope, maybe. You'd have you know? to. I mean, when you because when you're up there, I mean, you got to remember you're watching a football game from the upper mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. You could see the players. You could the see the field. game. You could see what's going on. Mm-hmm. But to watch just the one ring, yeah, that you know probably, yeah. In I don't, where they would put it, the fifty yard line, let's say. Yeah, somebody yeah. actually, uh, somebody actually complained. They had bought tickets for WrestleMania, and it said on their ticket when that they, they printed their ticket, your view may be obstructed. <laughs> so they got to the WrestleMania. This was when it was in, um, I think it was WrestleMania 30, 33, which was in San Francisco a few years ago. Mm. They got to their their sign, and they were behind the WrestleMania sign, so they couldn't see anything. And they Nothing. complained oh and they goodness. said, they said, listen, your ticket said you might be obstructed because sure. they were behind like the Jumbotron and, but hey, right. they were there. Uh, <laughs> but those poor guys probably didn't enjoy it as much as I did uh, on my couch. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, obstructed view. Uh, yeah. I get it. You know, you want to put as many people as you can in the stadium. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. But an obstructed view to me should mean I have a view and it's mm-hmm. obstructed. It means I have mm-hmm. to watch it like this. Yeah. You know, or maybe look over. A, a balcony or something, yeah. not yeah. not like this. <laughs> well, the fun. um, it's funny you mentioned that. I like I said, I'm Canadian, and I've gone to see the up to Maple Leaf, the old Maple Leaf Gardens, which is no longer in the. Uh, they don't use that anymore. But uh, I had a ticket one time at Maple Leaf Gardens to see Winnipeg Jets and Toronto Maple Leafs, and my I found my my I was standing room only because we could. It was always sold out, so my number was on a I beam was on a steel I beam. So I had uh, to either do this. Yeah. Or, or that. Yeah. Or one or the other. So you had it was view. funny. Yeah. It was fun. It was, it was, uh, they don't make them like that anymore. Thank goodness. Right. But they called that a barn, the old barn. And that's <laughs> why. Um, but, uh, yeah, wrestling, uh, you're talking, uh, wrestling was pretty huge. Wrestling has been huge and keeps growing. And then it is completely mm-hmm. in my, my, partially educated opinion and uh, Tim's fully educated opinion on wrestling. And do, you know, no small thanks to Hulk mm-hmm. Hogan. Yeah. So he was, you know, he started, he started, um, he wasn't, um, I guess uh, he was one of the first ones to wrestle. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And then, you know, followed, you know, you get Predator and you have Jesse, the body Ventura and he started, started with Arnold Schwarzenegger and he came back with a running man. And then mm-hmm. as they progressed, so Hogan did, he did probably 20, you know, Close to twenty three movies, not nothing as big as Rocky three, obviously. Right. Um, the next one he would do would be No Holds Barred, nineteen eighty nine. Oh, I remember that one. All yeah. wrestling movie, right? So, yeah. And then, and then, wrestling. You know, like our show, they segue into something. They brought the character Zeus into the WWF to have a feud with Hulk Hogan, steel cage match. Right. It was just, mm-hmm. it was fresh. Everybody was excited about the movie, so they brought him into through the wrestling world, right? So another unstoppable or unbeatable person that Hulkamania right. took down. So 
Um, yeah, he was he was larger than life, Hulk Hogan. So, well, and still is. I mean, you're mm-hmm. talking uh, '84 was 38 years ago when mm-hmm. Hulkamania officially started. Uh, that's what yep. it says on the shirts that you buy down there in the beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Hulk is, as everybody has known, you know, we we've uh, touched base on his place on Clearwater Beach, Florida, down here. He has a restaurant on the beach. Hulk, Hogan's Hangout, not Hulk. Hogan, yeah, sorry, Hogan's Hangout. Hogan's Hangout, right there. I love right that. Next, I love that yeah. logo. It's awesome. Not, not directly next door. It's probably about two doors down is his, mm-hmm. uh, I guess you could say gift shop, so to speak. It's right. a memorabilia slash gift shop. Sells t-shirts, sells autograph items, mm-hmm. sells, mm-hmm. uh, you can see in the back, they have weight belts. They have, yeah, make, they have, uh, replica wrestling belts, real wrestling belts that he wore and signed, um, but the point of even bringing all this up is see, you walk yeah. in, there's a massive picture of him holding Rocky up. And that's actually from Sly. It's signed from Sly. Right. And, uh, he signed, that's a statue in front of the memorabilia shop. Yeah. That everybody goes to take a picture with. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, reason I'm even bringing all that up is because 38 years later, his restaurant is packed. Yeah. And his, his memorabilia store is packed. And that's mm-hmm. where I, that was the first time I went to karaoke to try to meet him. Mm-hmm. The place is packed. Yeah, they're all and in he's there. Still, uh, he, yeah, he's still What's bringing that? out the. He's still bringing out the lovely ladies. Yeah, right? yeah there's uh, Mrs. Stein. Lady looks familiar to me. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Stein Jimmy, in her Hulkamania shirt with Jimmy Hart, right? With Jimmy Hart, super nice man, very very yeah. nice man. But mm-hmm. that was one. I think that was the third or the fourth karaoke period that he had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was packed. Now it's gotten so big now. Where they issue out tickets. Now you don't have to pay for the tickets, from mm-hmm. what I understand. Yeah, but, but you have I to just get guaranteed you to get in the building. Mm-hmm. Because when I went and I hung around just alone because my wife didn't want to go again, uh, it, he, I got up there to to, to meet him. Mm-hmm. And the place was insane. I mean, there was standing room only. Yeah, it was wall to wall people. And uh, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. The point I'm trying to make with it all is that all these years later, all these mm-hmm. years later, he's still an icon. How about there that, folks? There Look at that right there. There he is. Right. I went over to you know, oh, can I get a picture? Sure, brother. Come here. You know, yeah, and that's uh, that's wicked right there. I love it. It was pretty cool. I have to admit him. He's yeah. a legend. Yeah. He's a legend. Even yeah. I'm not into wrestling as well as deep as you are. Mm-hmm. It's still, uh, I, let's put it this way. I'm not into hockey at all. Yeah. At all. Not yeah. even this much. Mm-hmm. If Wayne Gretzky was in a bar, I would mm-hmm. go ask to take a picture with him. Yeah. You know, he's well, a legend. And, uh, and speaking of which, Hulk Hogan attends quite a few Tampa Bay Lightning games. He's, yeah, he does. He's a big he fan, goes, right? He's, so, because you know, he lives down there. He doesn't live yeah. far from the restaurant. Mm-hmm. He does go to local places a lot. He's seen out a lot. His gym is down the street from the restaurant. Mm-hmm. He's still, I mean, he just had a, uh, a meet, meet him and get autographed pictures mm-hmm. and whatnot mm-hmm. and get autographed items. There was a line out the door going down the beach. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. The kids were there. And mm-hmm. the funny part about it is that there's people that are our age, mm-hmm. and then they have their sons yeah. or daughters. Yeah. And then they have grandsons or daughters mm-hmm. that are, you know, some of them are dressed up. Some of them have the T-shirt. Mm-hmm. So they know of it, too. They yeah. know the history. That's the pretty cool part is that they may follow The Rock now mm-hmm. or whoever is the most followed yeah. What's the newer Roman Reigns? Is he he's Roman a, Reigns is the champion yeah. right now? Yeah, and so uh, then maybe they follow him, but they know they learned from dad, yeah, or grandpa, where it yeah. stems from. And well, when they see it, they want to go. There he is. Right. You know? That's right. So. And like I said, take wrestling with a grain of salt, people. It's yeah. entertainment. Okay. Um, we've had, there's conversations. You know, it's fake and and you know it's not real. Let me tell you this: yeah. it's not fake. It's fixed. Okay, these guys. Yeah, we all know the outcome, and they know the outcome, but who cares? Just go and have a good time. I mean, the bottom line is maybe some of those, you know, pounds are a little pulled, maybe not as hard. But I'm sorry, when you're throwing somebody out of the ring into a table Mm -hmm. or somebody's leaping off the top rope and coming down on you, yeah, that's going to hurt. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you're from. Even if I I lay down a a three-inch mat or four-inch mat on the floor, and I pick you up and I slam you on it, you know what? When you wake up in the morning, you're going to be sore. Okay? You're going to feel and, it. And the other thing is, these guys do this, and girls, excuse me, the wrestlers are on the road. They wrestle up to 300 times. They're on the road 300 days a year. 
right? So it's not That's like crazy. a, you know, they're they're little, go, go, go. ten months a year, pretty much. Yeah, you know, a little, so, a little um, under two months off. You know, yeah, and Hogan, did, like I said, he he did. Um, he was a, you know, twelve time champion, six in WWE, uh, six in WCW. Well, there yeah, goes one uh, of my trivia questions. <laughs> <laughs> we can still ask it. You can still ask it. I'll, if uh, I you're gonna, you're gonna, you are gonna streak through the right. trivia today, brother. So, I'm you, no, I mean there was there was lots of movies, right? So he did um, Hogan Knows Best. He did a reality show. So, yeah. like you said, you mentioned The Rock, John Cena, Randy Orton, right? All these guys kind of away. followed Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was in Expendables. Yeah. Okay, all these guys. Um, Hogan was the trailblazer. Okay. Yeah. He, he paved the he way. Did it. He absolutely did. You know, there wouldn't be, if you ask a lot of them, the conversation is Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan or the undertaker, right? Who's the greatest of all time. Who's the goat. Now, if you ask each one of them, Hogan says Flair is the best and Flair says Hogan's the best. Right. So, you know, they even had Flair at, Hogan's hangout, right? So singing and, yeah. and dancing. Yeah, he was so. there when the day that I did meet Hulk, I, yeah. I met I met Ric Flair. And unfortunately, yeah. I met him, and then he kind of got shuffled away from me. I couldn't right. get a picture with him, but I did yeah. take pictures of him. And a super yeah. nice man. He was having a good old time. But uh, be careful. Yeah, they have a, they have a you very careful. mutual respect. You want to be careful uh, if you get partying with Ric Flair because he'll keep you all night long. <laughs> Oh, right. he, he was putting some of the younger people under the table the way he yeah. was drinking and partying. It was woo. a good time. Yep. And everybody's yelling the woo. And yeah, you know, I mean, they, uh, it, it was, it was fun. And he, and, and also too, if anybody's never been there and plans on going down to Clearwater Beach, Florida, and you're a Rocky fan or a Hulk fan or whatever you are, or if you, you know, kind of a fan, not only does it have all the, the perks of seeing the place the way it is. Now mm-hmm. keep in mind that the Hogan's Hangout, which is the restaurant, does not have Hulk wrestling things hung up around it. Mm-hmm. It's not a it's not a hard rock cafe mm-hmm. memorabilia to Hulk Hogan yeah, place. Right. It's decorated, wrestling's on the TV. The only things are like the shirts mm-hmm. and hats and stuff that he sells. The memorabilia store, which is a couple of doors down, is where you get all the the posters yeah, and the shirts. It looks and like, else. uh, it looks like the wrestling world threw up and it's no, all but over the, the reason place. I'm even bringing up the restaurant, the restaurant, uh, now we ate there four times, I believe, maybe five times. I don't recall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good food. And mm-hmm. I, and I can't stress that enough because sometimes down the beach, it's a little hard to find good food because some of them are just tourist traps. Right. Now, if I didn't live here, I would definitely think Hulk Hogan's was a tourist trap. Mm-hmm. It's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. You see, you know, Hulk Hogan's place. Oh, I'm sure the food sucks there. It doesn't. I'm telling yeah. you, this food. Now, keep in mind, they're only closed three hours a day. Mm. Really? Yes. They open at three, they open at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. and they close at 3 a.m. It's awesome. So they're closed three hours a day. They open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. And the food is phenomenal. It's very yeah. good food. Very good food. And then, of course, you have a chance to maybe meet Hulk. And yeah. Hulk's always got somebody else there. Uh, the night I went to go sing, that country singer Toby Keith mm-hmm. was there previous to me getting there. Yep. Dennis Rodman has been there. Rick yep. Flair has been there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell you what, he, Tony, if I if I come down to Florida, we're gonna close the place. Oh, we're you gonna go it all down. night long. Well, first of all, yeah, go. you better come down right yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's we're, right. we're definitely gonna go to Hulk's. Make it on a Monday too. We'll go sing yeah, karaoke. Yeah. Yeah, you take a couple of days off, and uh, we'll open the open the place for breakfast, and we'll close it with Ric Flair. So. <laughs> That'll be interesting karaoke right there. We, we, maybe we'll do the show right from there, right? So, <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, I don't. Hey. Yeah, we hey, do, let's do a live from there. That'd be amazing. Oh, that'd be that'd be unbelievable. So uh, that would be amazing. Uh, we, no, we, I we think we it's hoping great. to get Hulk on the show. I mean, I yeah. I'm still trying that. I've, I've said that a long time ago. Yeah, I want to try and get him on the show, but you have to have that 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 timing where where you're talking yeah, yeah. to him and be able to fit it in. Mm-hmm. When I was talking to him to take the picture, it wasn't really it. It wasn't really, I don't want to say appropriate because it, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, but it, yeah. it didn't, it didn't segue into me asking him to be on the no, show. That's right. That's right. But maybe one day, you never know. Hey, you know what? Um, like I said, we tying this in with, uh, with Rocky three segment and mm-hmm. Sly and Sly has taught us never give up, right? Always keep fighting, right? So, Always. you know, you might hear no and no tomorrow and no the next day, but, um, uh, you know, you never give up and you never quit trying and give it your best, right? So, so we who cares? Do. All they're gonna do, the worst they're gonna do is say no or throw you Keep out trying. or 
whatever. He so probably bans me from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> you just say it to me. You know who I am? Yeah, right. Oh. Come on. We we gave a whole episode to it dedicated to you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. He really is. He's an icon. He's a legend. Uh, I have, I'm sure it's, you know, everybody has a bad day, but I've never heard about yeah. him giving anybody a bad day. Uh, as far as the fans go, mm-hmm. he's definitely a people's guy. He, he, I know that he did play the bad guy a little bit, so to speak, when he went Hollywood Hulk Hogan, I yep. if I remember. So yeah, he went to WCW in, um, in the early, uh, nineties and he was, he turned heel, right? And that was, um, Pretty devastating for a lot of the Hulkamaniacs. I'm not gonna lie, that's when I was like, uh, ah, you know, I'm not watching. Yeah, anymore. and then and guy. um, they, you know, they had to do that because a lot of guys were jumping ship from the WWE, and then um, he became Hollywood Hulk Hogan. So it was just a whole new. He, he started out a heel, right? So he started out a heel, and they made him Hulkamania, and he he did that for many years, and uh, but now you know, everywhere you go, like I said, he's just. He's just loved by everybody, and it's good to see that he's got these the the restaurant, and that he shows up at the restaurant, right? Like a lot of people Every have Monday. these restaurants, and Every they have Monday, their name on it. I, I, I don't want to say it's guaranteed, yeah, but pretty much is every Monday. He pops in here because his uh his son Nick Hogan does mm-hmm. DJing, and they have a party DJ party on Thursday nights. Yep, he um and he pops in from time to time on other nights. Sure. Because it literally is like a mile and a half from his house. Mm-hmm. Clearwater Beach yeah. is not big. It's a, just yeah. a small peninsula. Uh, but Monday night, pretty much a lock where he'll be there around 8-ish. Usually yeah. stays there to about 11-ish, maybe 12. Yep. And oh, that's great. Like it must be just They set it up there. very differently now. So it's a little, uh, you know, a little broken off more than it was <laughs> before. But yeah, it would, still uh, pretty cool. I tell you, it'd be. It'd be awesome to be there. And, uh, someday we're going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to hop in the, hop in the car, head down. We'll bring the maple syrup. <laughs> yes, please and, do. <laughs> um, uh, head to Hogan's hangout and, uh, just have a great time and just, uh, that would be amazing. Open invitation, loose. my brother. Open invitation yeah. anytime. Just let me know. All right. So, um, since we're on the subject of Mr. Hogan, I thought we'd do a little trivia. Let me just fire up my, um, do it. my little it's video. Trivia time. Everybody get your roller skates on. How about that, eh? <laughs> it still makes me laugh. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I just I, I feel like we used to have a we used to have a place. Now I'm sure you guys did too. Mm. We had a place called Studio 801 here in Kingston, and it you could do the roller skating, you could do five pin bowling, you could do mini yeah. golf. They even had a dance floor. Oh, they, they had, had everything. Okay. They had an arcade. Uh, they had burgers and fries and milkshakes, and literally you could be there all day. If they had a, had a theater beside it, you'd probably never leave. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they um, they tore it down quite a few years ago, and it's a shame because, I mean, we could we could go there at like I don't know if it opened at eleven o'clock in the morning or something, and you could be there till eleven o'clock at night. Like it was it was crazy, and you didn't. It wasn't very expensive. I think you could, right? You know, you could. I don't know if there it was if it was free to do the roller skating, but um, maybe like you used to have free. to rent the shoes, you know, the roller yeah. shoes. Yeah, yeah, I do that, sure. Themselves. But yeah. uh, ours didn't have as much added attractions as yours did. Ours right, was yeah, a, a handful of video games and whatnot, but it was yeah. mostly the roller rink, you know. And it was, yeah, it was a good time. So it, was a, it, it makes me think of that when I see that. It's pretty cool. All right, well, let's uh, let's dive into some trivia. Not having a trivia. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So you are, I have, I have 10 questions for you, but now ten. nine. Okay. Okay. Well, nine. nine. Cause you, I still, you have, do I get, do I get points for that one? Even though. Oh I yeah. Answer. Yeah. You're going to get that one. <laughs> All Cause right. I want you to, oh, you're going to go 10 and oh, I know you are. All right. Well, go, uh, let me see. I'll, then I'll, if you got 10, I'll start. I got, um, I got an easy one. So Thunder Lips in Rocky three, when he comes in the ring, how much does the announcer say he weighs? Or sorry, 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 how much does, how much, yeah, how much does he, I, I screwed that up. I even screwed up my own question. How, <laughs> how much, what, uh, Rocky says, how much do you think he eats? Sorry. That's oh, much he eats. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one I got. 202 pounds. That one I got. 202 pounds. And yeah. then, of course, yeah, the announcer he, he turns, yeah. I thought that was fine. I thought I'd warm you up with 
a really easy. Like that was really. Thanks for that. Okay. Thanks for that gimme. Thanks for All the right, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So first question is, what is Hulk's finishing move called? It is called the leg drop. There you go. The atomic leg drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna whiz by all these. I'm going. <laughs> I'm gonna go two for every one. You know, you know. You know what's funny? Um, like I said, when I was a kid, and you see him body slam somebody and do the big leg drop and one, two, three. That's just like a probably an opening move now. Like it's not right. even considered a, not a big deal anymore. You know, oh, that's well, he did it to Rock. You remember? You know, came they in, do that. They do that yeah. in the in the promos when they're right. when they're talking about wrestling. So, anyways, good. All right, so second one I got for you here. Let's see. Um, has Hulk ever won a Royal Rumble? He's actually won two of them. He's won, uh, I believe it was 1990 and 1991. Two for two. There you there go. Right, so anybody that doesn't know what a Royal Rumble is, uh, <clears throat> WrestleMania two, they had what they called the Battle Royal, which was kind of fun. WrestleMania 2 was actually a really fun event. They had it from three different cities, if you can believe it or not. So you want to talk about directing. They figured, how are we going to do this from three cities? But they had uh, three arenas on the go, and they actually had wrestlers versus NFL football players. William Refrigerator <laughs> Perry was in it, and there was a oh, lot of NFL that. players. I yeah. didn't see it, but I remember so, seeing commercials. Uh, about a Royal, they put 20 men in the ring. And these guys are like 300 plus, right? Like, I think the smallest guy was 250 pounds. One of the rest, wow. one of the football players, uh, Andre, the giant, big John stud, they ring the bell and all friggin' hell breaks loose. And it's, you got to throw your opponent over the top. So the Royal rumble, um, came up with the late Pat Patterson came up with the idea and it was two men start. And every two minutes, another person runs in the ring. Oh, so you could okay. have two, you could have four, you could have six, you could be back down two, and you have to throw everybody over. So, um, yeah, Hogan won two times the Royal Rumble. Wow. And they, All it's right. a, it's a big event every year, every, um, every January they have the Royal Rumble. So, well, you're two and oh, I'm barely one and oh. So <laughs> that, was a, that was a gimme. Well, you're three and oh, you got, yeah. you got the how many titles? So, <clears throat> okay. So I got, I got a, I got one for you. So the movie No yeah. Holds Barred, Hogan Ooh. starred in. Who was, who was his op- opponent in No Holds Barred? What was oh. his character's character's name? I completely. Oh, his character name? Yeah, the character name that he faced that tried to in, in the tried movie? to take in the movie. Yeah, not not Hogan's, but who did? Right. He, who was the bad guy? Uh, Randy Sat Macho Man. <laughs> no, that would be I Zeus. Have no idea. Zeus, who? who was Zeus? Oh, Zeus. Oh, you even yeah, told so, me that earlier. So he was, uh, yeah, I even told you the answer. So that was played <laughs> by Tom Tiny Lester Jr., who came into WWE again after, uh, No Holds Barred as Zeus, as the character Zeus. So gotcha. they played it right off the movie. So okay. I figured, I, I thought I'd do the movie, movie angle with you. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I, I knew you were going to be acing this whole week. So <laughs> that's fine. That's, I'm okay with that. All right, I got two more. Mm-hmm. Well, not two more, but two. I'll do two more, and then okay. you go with them. Did Roddy, Roddy Piper, beat Hulk Hogan in the war to settle the score? He did not. That's correct. That is correct. See, <laughs> four and zero. Oh. Yeah. All right. Um, did Hulk ever beat Ric Flair? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, it's, it's too easy. It's just too easy. <laughs> Well, some of them are really yes, pathetic, though. Like some of them were like, "What was Hulk's name in Rocky Three? Yeah. What's Hulk's real name? Mm-hmm. You know, which is, so which like, is uh, his thing. real name? Anybody that doesn't know is Terry Bollea. Terry Bollea. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, all right. So you got one, two, three, okay. Four. So you're five and zero. Oh. I got five. Okay. More. So I got one more for you. Uh, okay. I'll do another one for you. Um. True or false, Hulk Hogan starred in the movie Mr. Nanny. That is true. Hey, there you go. Boom. Hey. See? One two for the one. stallion. See? <laughs> We're right there. A two and one. That's it. All right. Two and one. Okay. Ready? So, oh, how many times did the champ? You already got that one. Okay. So we got who beat, who did beat, blah, 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 beat last for the WWE? 
So who did Hulk beat last when last match he was in WWE? He, uh, the last match, uh, I believe it was Sid Vicious. Uh, who beat last for WWE? Is it, is who he beat? Who yeah. Hogan beat last? Yes. Oh, wait. Um, was it Sting? It said Bret Hart. Oh, Bret Hart. And I don't know who Bret Hart is, so. <laughs> oh, Bret, well, Bret, Bret the Hitman Hart was Canadian. Oh, I, I knew the name. Okay. You know, the I Hitman. Remember, I didn't so know he was, was the uh, Hitman. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what it said. So, all right. So when they, when Hulk Hogan, you know how they always say, okay, Rocky from the city of Philadelphia, Rocky yep. Balboa. Yep. What was his, uh, what was his build from Hulk he Hogan? Was, uh, as Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan from Venice Beach, California. There you go. That was too easy for you. Yeah. I didn't realize he I had heard, others when he I heard that. In. Yeah. I heard that quite a bit. So, uh, growing up. So, cause I always think, I always thought to myself, oh, geez, where's this Venice Beach and, how are they producing these great big monsters? Right, exactly. I know. We're, but we're then I met the camera. then I met the stallion, and I realized they make them tough in Florida. So, <laughs> all right, I got four more. Okay, One, Jesus, two, you got yeah, a lot of questions four. this week. Well, I was trying to hit you up. I mean, I knew you were going to get all these. <laughs> I figured I, I at least get one curveball in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, name the cartoon series in 1985 oh, with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. I absolutely love this. It was Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Rock and wrestling. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I remember was seeing phenomenal. those commercials. I was yeah. old. I was nineteen, so a little, little yeah, too yeah. old. But yeah, I remember no, seeing them. It was. Like, listen, I grew up on an island. Okay, we had four channels, so <laughs> to get to get first of all to get wrestling on Saturday afternoon was great, but to get a wrestling cartoon, oh, that was icing <laughs> on the cake. All right. So, when did Hulk win the first title, mm-hmm. and versus who? Okay. So he won in uh, 1984 versus mm-hmm. the Iron Sheik, there you go. and he did it in just over five minutes. <laughs> it was the shortest match. The shortest match because yep, they – and and honestly, the Iron Sheik, um, interesting enough, was an Olympic wrestler. Oh, really? Uh, before That's he came cool. to the WWE. And uh, backstage – so I met the Iron Sheik here in Kingston. Oh, wow. He came here a few years ago, and he did like a – wasn't – I don't want to say comedy show, but it was, it was kind of funny, but he mm-hmm. just telling wrestling stories. So he said, okay. you know, he was an Olympic wrestler. He could have seriously beat Hulk Hogan. He said, like I wrestled in the Olympics. His friend said, you know, don't, don't do this. Don't you do this. And they're just going to throw you away and throw you off to the side. But uh, the wrestling world, uh, the, the script was written. So you, you do what you, you know, it's yeah. called putting over. So he put yeah. over Hulk Hogan. And they're actually they're actually good friends, Hulk Hogan and Iron Sheik today. Um but I remember uh, the Iron Sheik. I remember seeing him. Yeah. But he was it was funny because the wrestling world, he played from Iran, okay, and he played the character, you know, spitting on the American flag and they're playing yep. down down yep. south. And a lot of these arenas, um, they had to actually put him in an ambulance to get him out of the arena because they thought oh, really? oh, how are we gonna get him to the airport? How are we gonna get him to the Right. The um, hotel. There's people out there waiting for him because he just ripped the American flag right. in half, spit on it, and threw it. He's, you know, he's acting. Yeah, but, but he's they got don't, people they don't so wrapped anything. up. You get down, you know, you get down in the states. You don't do that to the red, white, and blue, right? right? The stars and stripes. So they would put him in an ambulance, run oh, the goodness. siren, and they just go right through the crowd and then down the road, somebody would pick them up and drive right. them on to the next city because <laughs> right. they hey, you thought, you know, them, right? some people really took uh, the wrestling to sure. the show to heart. So they, yeah. um, you know, they, the entertainment was, and I mean, that was a little bit touchy, right? They don't, they don't do that anymore. There's a right. lot of things. And I, I met Jimmy Hart here in mm-hmm. Kingston at a wrestling show and we had a great conversation backstage. Um, I was helping out backstage and we had a great conversation. He said, even from the eighties, when he was a heel manager, he can't say the things to people that he said in the eighties, oh, right? No. Like you just can't do it because you do that and somebody doesn't call into work the next morning. And, right. um, you know, you, you know, you don't, you don't insult people. They're it's just like anything else. It's a different world yeah. now. So it's, it's very it, different. And you, you gotta be, it's the wrestling still has the, has the villains and, and, and they play off the audience, but it's totally different than it was. Right in the eighties. So I apologize for my long answer, but no, 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 that's okay. Yeah. I knew you were going to take this episode and run with it with, uh, and mm-hmm. definitely worth 
worth listening to. Yeah, it's fun. All right, so I got two more. Man, sure. I know you're going to get them. You're going 10 and 0. I know you are. <laughs> so in, in 2003, mm -hmm. what name did Hulk wrestle under for WWE? In 2003? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let me think or what here. nickname I should say, not name. But. The, um, oh, <laughs> it was the Patriot. Mm, I think it was the, sure about that? it was, I think it was, I might the have Patriot. got you on one. Yeah. Or was it the, oh, geez. I think, I thought it was the Patriot. You're close. Not, so you're that way. The American, the, the American right Patriot. Room. Uh, I, it was a, he, he wore a mask. I you're getting closer mask. when you added that yeah, in. He wore a mask and the masked American. Yep. You're close. Okay. I'm Mr. I, America. I, I, I'm Mr. America. Okay. Cause Mr. I know America. he wore, I know he wore a mask and everybody. I had that, no idea. Yeah. So it was, was like, um, let me just throw that out. Everybody there. said it's Hulk Hogan. And they said, no, I'm not Hulk Hogan. So anyways. Yep. Mr. America. I was close. That was. Yeah. All right. Last one. True okay. or false? Yeah. Was Hulk Hogan the very first wrestler ever to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated? That is absolutely true. Yep. And not only is it true, he's the only wrestler to appear, oh, really? appear on Sports that. Illustrated. Yep. So nobody's time, been on it since? Nobody's been on it since. Oh, wow. I didn't yep. know that. No, he's the only one. There you go. Say, throw, the, throw the book out. Tim's ace. There we are. There we are. So, Definitely no, works. this was, uh, you know what? I love, I love talking Hulk Hogan. I love talking wrestling. Obviously look behind me, right? So, um, this is a lot of stuff from my, I went to the, I went up in the rafters of the garage day and I, uh, um, <laughs> I have a box and it says, Tim stuff, do not throw out. <laughs> um, and that's mostly for me too. Uh, I can't remember what's in what box, but, um, no, this is, it was just fun. And you know what? Like I said, uh, I want to end this though. We didn't touch on it from Rocky three. Um, Hulk Hogan was inducted to the WWE hall of fame in 2005. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this, Tony, and, uh, yeah. he was inducted by Sylvester Stallone because everybody has somebody. They, they ask who you want to induct. Yeah. And he says, hands down, I want Sly to do it. So, that's pretty cool. Um, Sly he, came. I mean, in reality, he's the reason why yeah. he became, you know, yeah, Hulk that's right. So Sly graciously came and in 2005 inducted Hulk Hogan. He made a, you know, really nice speech. You can go look at, look it up on YouTube. Um, you know, he gave a nice speech and, and Sly said, you know, Hogan brought it. He says, I felt everything that he did in Rocky three as much as Hogan said Sly was the real deal. Mm. Um, Sly said, you know, those bumps, um, when he's picking me up and throwing me down, he goes, I felt them. He goes, just yeah. like wrestling, it's scripted, right? I know what right. he's going to do. And, and, but you I gotta still understand, gotta fall. I right? still gotta the, can, the canvas has, has springs underneath it and has yeah. foam underneath it. But again, if I pick you up and throw you on a mattress, you know what? You know, your body's not used to it, right? So, yeah. Um, and Sly was famous for letting, you know, making everything look as real as possible. That's why he wanted, he didn't want an actor playing a wrestler. Mm -hmm. He wanted a wrestler playing a wrestler mm -hmm. there. Yep. Right. So like well, Sly was definitely later on in Bal uh, Balboa where he had Tarver, right? So yep. he tried to get the boxers and the athletes. And I mean, you know, Mr. T, Apollo Creed, you know, Ivan Drago, these are all athletes, right? So that was the one thing about the wrestling. Uh, now you see, you know, Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar and guys that come in from the UFC, a lot of ex football players, right? So they get injured and they still want to be in this, uh, spotlight and they still want to be making the money and, and living the life, right? So a lot of pro, uh, pro athletes turn, turn to wrestling because they can make the money and they can, sure. you know, still travel and entertain and, and, uh, they're in shape and people love to see them. I mean, the guy, uh, I think there's a guy called The Rock. I mean, he's pretty big. <laughs> pretty, right? A little, so, a little bit. He's kind of well but known. He, you know, he got his start. He's actually a third generation wrestler. Yep. Right? His grandfather, Rocky uh, Maivia, right? Or and Peter Maivia, excuse me. And then uh, Rocky Johnson, his father, mm -hmm. wrestled, yep. right? Both passed on, on now. But uh, when he came in, um, it's funny. You can look this up, too. His name was Rocky Maivia, and he hated it. He said, I hate it, but it was a tribute to his grandfather and his father, right? right? 
Right. And then again, the late Pat Patterson changed his name. He says, well, we just call you the rock. And he says, I love it. So they, there you go. You know, he had the people's eyebrow and, and, but yeah. he's one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. Right. But he got his start in wrestling and he still mm-hmm. makes his appearances at WrestleMania and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't wrestle anymore, but he mm-hmm. still shows up and, uh, gets involved and a lot of them come back. So, but again, all of them, every one of them can thank Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Can thank Sly. Yeah. Putting him in Rocky three. Yeah. All stemmed from Sly putting him in Rocky three. Hulk took it from there. Yeah. And Hulk, Hulk's had the ball in his hands and has run, been running with since. That's right. So, Hulk, we appreciate what you've done. I mm-hmm. mean, Hopefully you've ever watched this. You never know. Sly might yep. pass you on. Yeah. But, uh, hopefully we can get you on one day too. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we, it's pretty cool. Thank you for 38 plus years mm-hmm. of being a, a face of wrestling. I mean, yeah. there's not a, not a person alive that doesn't know the name Hulk Hogan. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, pretty- with the rip in the shirt and, and got the American flag, uh, usually with them and, uh, you know, He's uh, saying his prayers and eating his vitamins and hanging and banging and crashing, smashing the weights, right? So uh, he's an American icon, right? So he's sure. another, yeah, he's another he's symbol. A legend. Right? He's a legend. So, he actually absolutely is. So it's very cool. But it's a good episode. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, Tony. I uh, I love talking some wrestling. And, and Thanks for my uh, soft three trivia questions. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did uh, you did pretty good. So, There's no uh, way I would have answered any Reverend trivia no. or Russell trivia. I was, I'll tell you one I was going to ask you. I was going to okay. let me see here. Um, let's see, let's see how bad I am. I was say what was what was Hogan's Hulk, one of Hulk Hogan's wrestling names before Hulk Hogan. Ooh, I don't know. I didn't know he was anything before Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah, he was Hogan? known. Just, he was known as Super Destroyer. He oh, was geez. also known as the um, uh, Sterling Golden. Okay. okay. He actually, he actually dropped out of, um, uh, Florida University, Florida State University. Become a wrestler. I, I remember reading somewhere that he studied business in Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think you got to be anything with that kind of lifestyle. You're going to have to be, uh, in charge of your finances, right? Cause yeah. a lot of, yeah. a lot of wrestlers, um, unfortunately they still wrestle today. Um, yeah. they, or they did and they, you know, they weren't able to save their money and, and, um, no, well, speaking of somebody like that, I mean, we're not going to touch base on this now because we're yeah. wrapping it up, but, uh, check out the movie, The Wrestler with Mickey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and right. If you haven't seen that, that's definitely a movie to wake you up on what yeah. wrestlers go through yeah, in their life, for sure. especially towards the end of their life. Mm-hmm. Guys like Hulk Hogan are rare and few and far between that yep. were still training in the gym five mm-hmm. days a week. Yeah. Still, you know, getting out there and pushing it. Some of the guys are, in pretty bad shape, and yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's a lifestyle yeah. that's not for the weak. That's no. for sure. But this was uh, this was a lot of fun, Tony. It and was. It um, was. like I said, uh, anybody listening, we're on the last the Action Heroes podcast network. You can find us on with the other podcasts. Ryan has um, had us on with the Long Road, which is coming up. I think it's September thirteenth. Site, but it's the twelfth or the thirteenth. Yeah, the twelfth. We'll, we'll get the date for you though. We'll post it um, up there next episode. And we'll we'll post it. We're definitely going to post it for sure. We break down First Blood. We get to end the movie, the first season. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's pretty cool. And uh, we're also on YouTube, obviously, where you can watch us visually yep. if you like. If you're not the last, uh, the last real quick heads. thing we didn't we didn't do any Rocky trivia this week, but uh, I just want to I just want to mention uh, the Rocky trivia book here. Rocco just celebrated a birthday and yep. this post was on YouTube and he just found out he's going to Philly to see going the to statue, to see, to see the steps. So we just want to give a quick shout out to Rocco. Hope you had a wicked birthday. Hope you enjoy Philly. Um, Yo, maybe, you'll write another, maybe you'll write another book. That's it. My, my trip to Philly. Yeah. All right, Inspiring guys. Inspiring author. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Always a pleasure, my brother. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you down the road. Yep. Take care. See ya.